There's no denying that HBO's House of the Dragon's predecessor suffered a lot of criticism, especially during the finale, so it didn't come as a surprise that many fans are keeping a close eye on this one. For today's video, we'll be talking about how House of the Dragon is approaching the backlash to Game of Thrones ending, so if you're curious to know more, then you better keep on watching. In a recent interview, series co-creator Ryan Condal shares his thoughts on how the Game of Thrones ending affected their thought process and development for House of the Dragon. Condal admitted that he was envious of Game of Thrones popularity, and like many others in the line of industry, would like that kind of fame for his works. He says that it was always a struggle to just find an audience, so he thinks whenever you have a massive audience like Game of Thrones, you're always going to have a vocal fan base that will be very vocal about the things they like and they don't like. Seeing how longtime fans of Game of Thrones voice their opinions over the show's ending, Condal learned more than a thing or two. He believes that the lesson learned from the final season of Game of Thrones is that it has the largest fan base of any television show ever. It is a Comic Con crowd. Additionally, they have a lot to say and are highly vocal online. He views that response as the hallmark of a really successful program that went on for 10 years, and he views them as quite lucky to be in his shadow. He continued by saying that in his opinion, Opinion, they owe Game of Thrones a tremendous amount of gratitude for having them in this position. He also said that if David Benioff's and Dan Weiss's Game of Thrones didn't succeed, he wouldn't be producing House of the Dragon. The backlash that Game of Thrones received, and continues to receive to this day, was proof of how highly popular the series was, so for Condal, he only hoped that he could make something that the fans will love. He believes that his strategy and focus for House of the Dragon are focused solely Solely on creating a fantastic product that the audience would like. He claims he is working to create the show he would like to watch as a fan of George's books, and he hopes everyone enjoys it. But he also realizes that with the large audience that is hopefully coming their way, there will be people of all spectrums who feel all different ways about the show. This is just a part of the responsibility that he assumes in his role as the showrunner. So how bad was the Game of Thrones ending that House of the Dragon has to deal with its predecessor's backlash as well. The Game of Thrones series finale continues to be a significant moment in television history. HBO's flagship series about fire and blood remained unbowed, unbroken, and unbent for over a decade, in which the business made a significant shift towards streaming. The audience for Game of Thrones increased with each season, and by its final year, practically with each episode. Whilst most networks were losing viewers week to week and year to year. The season 8 finale, The Iron Throne, which debuted on Sunday night to 19 million viewers in the US, marked the culmination of everything. It goes without saying that when Future Week's DVR and global viewers were factored in, that number increased. That's a lot of viewers for a show that had the difficult chore of coming up with a satisfying conclusion after 9 years of speculation, or decades in the case of George R.R. Martin's most devoted fans. Nevertheless, 58% of viewers said that they were at least somewhat satisfied with the Game of Thrones finale, according to a THR slash Morning Consult poll. To say that Game of Thrones was worth the hype is an understatement, because the show got millions of viewers across the globe who religiously waited for the next episode. Plus, there are also the book fans who are lying in wait on whether the TV adaption will stay loyal to the source material. So, can you imagine the fans disappointment over the finale of the series, on the premise that not only did Game of Thrones finish poorly, but also that it somehow invalidated or ruined the entire nine years of anticipation and almost universal acclaim that came before it. The internet is flooded with essays, hot takes, and YouTube videos. More than two million people have signed a petition on Change.org requesting that HBO rework Game of Thrones final season to fan demands, including doing it without the showrunners David Benioff and D.B. Weiss. There's a remarkable irony to that last sentence given that Benioff and Weiss created most of the episodes and produced all of the rest for a show that the petition supporters evidently liked for at least seven seasons. Even now, three years later, and just before HBO premieres its first Game of Thrones spin-off series, House of the Dragon, that loud internet chatter is still going strong. Ryan Condal, who spoke with Den of Geek for an exclusive feature in 
our magazine's most recent issue, claims that George R. R. Martin first pitched the idea for the new show, House of the Dragon, to HBO years before Game of Thrones ended. Condal is also co-show running the series with director Miguel Sapochnik, who directed such iconic Game of Thrones episodes as Battle of the Bastards and Hardhome. Turning the clock back by nearly 200 years before Ned Stark went south for King's Landing, House of the Dragon ushers in a new era for HBO and Game of Thrones fans. Condal teased us that this was the last peaceful moment of Targaryen majesty, before the deadliest civil war in Westeros history. It is a time of epic splendor and decadence. But as Den of Geek talked to the author, they couldn't help but wonder if the fan response to the Game of Thrones finale permeated the House of the Dragon's newly expanded writer's room. When asked whether or not there's a stark difference between the time Game of Thrones debuted and today, Condal named social media as one of the factors that made all the difference. Condal humorously remarked during the interview that they didn't have TikTok, but he believes that to be the key difference. Social media simply did not exist in 2011, at least not to the same extent that it does today. The internet had undoubtedly been around for a while at that point, but considering how connected people are today compared to before, and how nearly everyone uses the internet, it is no longer simply a tool for nerds. It used to be possible to go to a message board about any interest you had if you knew what you were doing, but that is no longer the case. Anyone with a phone may now easily discover a Reddit forum where everyone and anyone discuss everything. Condal believes that social media has boosted fan involvement. However, he isn't sure whether this is for the best, to be really honest. He acknowledges that he occasionally longs for a simpler time when there was a thinner barrier between the performers and the audience, and it was easier to learn all the intricate information about how things were manufactured and to watch magic acts being performed. But there is much less of that now. Because everyone has constant access to all of this information, there is far less magic, specialness, and uniqueness in movie entertainment. But despite the pressure of social media, Ryan Condal says he and the team isn't stressing over it, and they're more focused on telling a good story. He asserts that their only responsibility is to write a compelling story, execute it flawlessly, and then wait for their audience to find them. He believes that their advantage is that they had a massive built-in audience that was already engaged in this property and material, whereas they had to garner people's favor. He again credits David Benioff and Dan Weiss for this. Everyone in 2011 questioned what a Game of Thrones was. It's now a common phrase. Everyone is aware of what it is. Therefore, he believes that for him, it really simply involves trying to block all of that out, writing a fantastic tale, producing a terrific show, putting it on, and then hoping that they're providing good service to that eager, vocal audience. In other news, HBO and HBO Max content chief Casey Bloys defends the Game of Thrones finale. According to HBO and HBO Max content president Casey Bloys, the season 8 ending defied fan expectations and especially sparked social media backlash. I think in multiple parts of our society, we are reminding ourselves that Twitter is not real life, Bloys told The Hollywood Reporter in an interview. We knew it was going to be divisive, and of course, you want all fans to be happy, but that's never going to happen. There weren't a lot of people walking around despondent or upset. It's a take that reads well, but probably doesn't fully reflect viewer feelings. Whichever the case, there's no denying the fact that the Game of Thrones finale continues to receive criticism even as we wrap up this video. And with that, we're ending today's video about how House of the Dragon is handling the backlash of Game of Thrones ending. Before you go, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel with the notification bell on for more videos like these. And we'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching.